Hello and welcome to this video on programming shortcuts. In this video, I'm gonna show you 12 of my top programming shortcuts that will make you look like a god and also save you some time. First, my name is Alex. On this channel, I post a Java tutorial just like this one every single week. So if you might be interested in seeing that, then please consider subscribing. If you're like me and you like to improve yourself and keep learning with the time you have, then I've got this great product I wanna make you aware of. It's called Audible. They make audio content like audiobooks, podcasts, and meditation. I've used it for an audiobook called How to Build a Billion Dollar App, and also a Y Combinator startup series, which helps startups get off the ground. Audible gives you access to thousands of titles and it's something I personally use all the time. Visit audibletrial.com slash Alex Lee to get started on your free trial and get a free audiobook that could be one of the ones I just mentioned. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash Alex Lee. Let's get started with these shortcuts by going to file new Java project. I'm just gonna call it shortcuts, hit finish. And then inside here, we'll just make a dummy class I'm just gonna call it main for now with a main method and hit finish. This will be a mix of regular shortcuts and Eclipse shortcuts. Eclipse shortcuts are specific to this development environment, but if you have a different one or IntelliJ, they might work with that as well. Let's get started. So the first one that I use the most is gonna be cut. Say you have a line of code that you print out, then you have another one one, two, three, save and run. But I decide I want to put ABC after. So what I'll do is on Mac, you would do Command X like this, or on Windows, you would do Control X. And then go to the one you want, boom, I put it after, run it, and now it's how I want it. That's most of the time what I'll use the cut shortcut for is just cutting code and putting it after or before on a different line. Next is copy. So see how before I printed out the whole thing, system.out.println, system.out.println, it's really annoying. So what I could have done instead is just do control C or command C, go to the next line, and then paste it, control V or command V. So that's two, copy and paste and then just change the one I want. And I know you may be familiar with most of this, but I wanna show you how useful these shortcuts are specifically for programming because they are super useful. So we have cut, which is command or control X, which lets us move things around. We have copy, control or command C, which lets us copy without deleting that line and paste it as many times as we want and that was paste, control, or command V. So we got those three down, and those are the top three, I'd say, shortcuts for programming that I use. Next, this is one I use a lot. Most people don't do this, but I do all the time, the save shortcut. So when you change something, this little um, save icon floppy disk um, is up here, and there's a little star. That means your file isn't saved yet. So we could click it, save, the star goes away and the program can be run. So when we run it now, we have no problems and it's updated. Instead of every time I wanna save it, I have to scroll my mouse all the way up here, click and then run. What I can do is actually do Control or Command S. And now the star goes away and we can run it like normal because we already saved it just by clicking a few keys on the keyboard instead of going all the way up here all the time. This is useful because you want to save very often when you're programming so you don't lose anything. Like something simple like this, I just deleted a line. I can do Control or Command S to save it so it's updated. Next, we've got Select All, which is super useful for making new files or transferring entire pieces of code. So say I wanna duplicate this file. What I could do is go to New Class call it main two. And if I wanna take all the contents in here, into here, I could highlight all of it, copy, and then paste into here, and then just fix the error. I could do that, or if this was really, really long, imagine having to physically move your mouse all the way down to line 1049 
and then scrolling all the way up, moving your mouse to like the very top so that the scroll comes up, waiting until the very top. It can be kind of annoying. So like big pieces of code like this, if you want to grab everything, you do Control or Command A. Like this, this highlights everything in the window. And then now since it's all highlighted, what you can do is you can cut it or most of the time you'll just copy it and then Command A here. And then now we can paste it in. This is what happens when we paste it. But notice we don't want two of them. We kind of want to replace the whole thing. So what we can do is Control A or Command A. This whole thing, delete it, and then paste the new code in and make our change. So Command or Control A lets you highlight the whole thing to which you can delete or copy or cut because it's highlighted. I'll just delete this now. Now let's go to the next one, which is called find and replace. So say for whatever reason, this was one, two, three, one, two, three. I just copied and pasted and now saved it and ran it. And let's say this was one, two, two, for example. Instead of having to go through a long list of things and see, is that two, is that a two there? Yeah. What we can do is Command or Control F, which will bring up this little window called find and replace. So in here, we can type what we want to find. We can find one, two, two, click find, and then it'll go through the whole thing and find what you typed in. If we typed in 12 here, it sees three 12s and goes through one by one. And the cool thing about this is that we can actually replace those 12s with something else. So say we wanted to replace one, two with three, three, or it can be a character, it can be anything. Say we wanna do dash A1 or whatever. <laughs> we can click replace to get the highlighted one replaced like that. Or we can do replace all, which will go ahead and replace all of them. I usually do one at a time because if you have a bunch of code and you do replace all, it might accidentally replace some that you didn't intend to. So that's find and replace, that is super useful. Now say I wanna get rid of this dash A because it looks kind of bad. What we can do is copy that, put that in find, and then replace that with nothing. So we can do replace all, and then it kind of deletes it. The next shortcut is comments. Say we didn't want to run the first two lines of code. What we could do is highlight them and then do command or control forward slash. This will turn these lines of codes into comments, which means this code won't get run. So I'm just gonna save it with the save shortcut, run it. And now we see only this line is printed because these are now comments, which means they don't get run. To uncomment them, we can do that same shortcut by highlighting them and doing command or control forward slash again. And now these pieces of code will get run. You can do this for individual lines so you don't have to highlight them. I use this shortcut all the time. I bet every day I use this shortcut because it's so easy if I have a whole block of code that I actually don't wanna run because I wanna focus on another part and see how that's working, I can just comment that code and focus on what I'm looking at. Next shortcut is tab. So say we had like an if statement, and I'm just gonna put a simple if statement here. Cut this and put it in here. But say we cut and put it in here, but the formatting was kind of wonky like this. Notice how what's inside of curly braces in Java gets formatted so that there is a little tab here. It's tabbed in to make it more readable. Well, this right here looks kind of messy. So I want to tab in all of these so that it looks better. Since that was only three, I could go one line at a time and tab them in. But say if they were all kind of messed up, what I can do is highlight all of them and just press tab to tab in all that line of code to make the blocks more organized. And then a bonus one, you can also do shift tab to bring them back out. Now we'll just delete all of this. The next shortcut is a really fun one and something I didn't realize till about a few months ago. You know how you type system.out.println all the time, you type this all the time. Well, in Eclipse, I don't know if this is similar for IntelliJ, but you can do 
sys out, and then control space. And that will autofill system.out.println, except you only have to type six characters, which is really nice. But that's a good one. I do that all the time in my videos. So if you ever see that, that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna open back up main two for a second. And I'll just copy these lines over using controller command C, paste them, controller command V, save it. Now I'm gonna show you a way to search across multiple files with controller command F. We could search through one file. If we hit find, it'll show the 12 in here, but not the 12 also in main two. So what we can do to search across multiple files is do the shortcut control H it's not command H because this is an Eclipse specific shortcut. So we can search for the string 12 in here. You could use regular expressions, but we're just gonna do a simple one. We're gonna go on over to the file search tab and type one, two in here. And this is gonna go through all the files that have the file name pattern here. So .java is what it's filled with. Hit search. And now it shows everywhere inside of the all these projects where 1, 2 is. So it even shows in my Java tutorials projects under the GUI 2 Java file, I have 1, 2 found in there. And it also shows main and main 2. So control H for Eclipse under file search, we'll go through all those files instead of just one. Another super awesome one is formatting again. So before we could like tab in to make it all nice and stuff, let's say we have that if statement again but say it's kind of like the parentheses are weird for some reason and these are off and this, I'm just gonna cut and paste this in here. Say maybe like the formatting is very weird like this. What you can do to format this entire file without having to go in manually is do command shift F. That formats the entire file for you in the blocks and structure that it was intended to be. Really awesome, I love this. Except it comes down to kind of personal preference. Like I, I personally don't put the extra space here. So I like to keep that there. And sometimes it might not format exactly how you want, but this is a really quick way, Command Shift F, to just format the whole file. And that's a really cool one. The last programming shortcut I'm going to show you is the opening a method shortcut. So say we've got this class main, um, let's make a method in here so that we can actually use the shortcut. It'll be public so that we can see it. Void, we don't need static because we're gonna call it a different way. Say hi. I love the say hi method, man. This is in a lot of my videos. And we're just gonna print out. We can print out using sys out control space, boom. And we'll just say hi. Save, run. Nothing happens because nothing's in the main method. But say we want to say say hi in main too. What we can do is just make that main object, main, just call it something m, is equal to a new main object like this. This main class knows a main method, which we can ignore because that just runs code, and it knows say hi. So this m object now, since it's main, knows say hi. So we can do m dot say hi. Like this, if we save and run m main two, then we see hi printed out. What if there's a bug here, or say hi isn't working how I expect it, and I wanna look at the code. What I can do is control or command hover over the method name, and then click it. This shoots you back to where the code is implemented for that method. And it's super awesome. I use this all the time. It's so useful. Imagine having to like go to the main class, like searching and then scrolling through all the methods. You can just control or command hover and click it and it'll shoot you right there. I use that all the time. Bonus tip, you can also control or command hover mm -hmm. over um, other things. So like this class here you can click the class and it'll shoot you back up there. This is how I use regular shortcuts and Eclipse shortcuts put together to make my programming a little easier and also just look really cool doing it. I know some of them are basic like cut, copy, paste, but I wanted to show you how I use them as a programmer. So I hope you like this video and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.